Mr. Newell, it is extremely kind of you to see us, and we do appreciate it, particularly as you are an Edinburgh graduate yourself, and you've been kind enough to say also that you support what we're trying to do in filming education to encourage British people to come out here to teach. I wonder if there's anything you'd like to say about that yourself. Well, the only thing I would like to say is to emphasize um, the importance of education in the development of any African country. In the more highly developed countries in the world, education is a social service. To us, it's not really a social service in the sense almost of a luxury. To us, it's a necessity yes. uh, upon which depends the very governmental structure yes. and the development of the country. You can yes. never begin to develop this, these countries until you have sufficiently educated people within our own borders. Mm. Yes, well, that's the thing. Here in Africa, in brief words, education offers a challenge such, such as it offers nowhere else in the world. Right? And we have two difficulties. One is finance. Um, within the limits of yes. finance, we are doing all we can. The other one, which I think is a, perhaps a much more important need, is the teachers. Yes. And, and you'll find that here in Tanganyika, for instance, our emphasis is on secondary education yes. for two things. First, because, or for three things. First, because it is there where we can quickly get the results yes. uh, in, in getting people into our services. It's also there where we can get the teachers. Mm. Uh, if we, our, our, one of our biggest needs is teachers, and we want the teachers quickly. Yes. Uh, and we can get them quickly if we expand um, secondary, secondary education, education. Uh, rapidly. But it's, there's also another very, and here this mm. is an important point, it's at that point where we can borrow teachers from other countries. Yes. Uh, we can't borrow teachers from other countries for our uh, primary education, but we can get them for our uh, secondary education. And for instance, this year, uh, we are getting 75 teachers from the United States of America. Yes. And, and I'm hoping, frankly, I'm hoping that Edinburgh and other universities <laughs> in, uh, in, uh, in the UK uh, will take the interest in uh, getting teachers interested in coming to teach mm. in these countries. Good, thank you, sir. Good thank you. Well, so you say that um, education is the framework and basis of, of the future of this country. Now, I do know that a lot of your promising school certificate people who might be going into the teaching profession are going for these scholarships, a lot of them to America. And although this is a very good thing, do you feel it's as well organized and, 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 and as well arranged as it should be? Well, originally it wasn't, but you may be aware that a number of American universities have now decided uh, to get this better organized than it was. Mm. Uh, it's, it's, it has become a controversial subject, but I believe myself that it is a good thing that we, we must get as many of our people uh, going abroad, coming back, uh, because after all, this is a long-term thing, yes. and the more of our people we can get a broader education, even before we can train them for teaching, the, yes. the, the better. I, I don't think myself uh, anything but good can be done mm. uh, through getting a large number of these boys, provided they have the qualifications and they go to, uh, to good universities coming back here. Fine, yes. Well, I, I thought you would say that the problem seems to be that there have been one or two um, rather doubtful scholarships, people going out who have arrived and, and, and found that they haven't the qualifications and that the course they're doing doesn't suit them and this sort of thing, but this is stopping now. Well, you know, naturally, this happens well. initially when you're organizing yes. anything on a large scale, but I think the position is being handled yes. now very satisfactorily. What do you feel about Britain's contribution to uh, education out here? Do you feel that she's making a big enough one at the moment, particularly in people like ourselves coming to teach or in scholarships to universities like Edinburgh and this sort of thing? Well, I mean, as I've said before, I, I hope that we can get more British people interested in coming to teach here. And in the, let, let me say there are two reasons for it. One is that the language problem, the system of education, and past associations. Yes. So it's, it's much better if we can get teachers from yes. English-speaking countries, from Britain and similar countries. Mm. And, and also, for some people like myself, for sentimental reasons, I would like to see a large number of teachers coming from the University of Edinburgh. <laughs> That's very nice. Um, well, sir, another point that strikes me, what you were just saying, I know that from the beginning of next year, official government policy is full racial integration of schools, but there are so many problems of money, of background, of language, of food, do you really feel that there will be much integration in schools? Won't they go on much as they are, perhaps with very few Africans at European schools and vice versa, or Asians? Initially, yes. 
But uh, our own experience here is that in all these matters, uh, the, the difficult thing is, is to make the decision, to cross the Rubicon. And yes. once you have crossed the Rubicon, changes take place much more quickly mm. than, than one expects. And I have a feeling that although initially it may be s a slow process, yes. it will gather momentum and, and within a very short time, I should think, there will be complete integration of the system. Mm. Yes, good. I don't know um, beyond that whether <coughs> you would say that there's this business of some schools being sort of eaten of Tanganyika, your, your own school, Pugu, um, has considered itself to be rather better than uh, other schools, I think. And now I know you're trying to localize schools for their own areas. Um, I believe you're meeting with some opposition. What do you feel about this? Well, this is quite natural. If I had uh, been still at Pugu teaching, mm -hmm. I would have the same desire to retain uh, the highest standards possible and one way of doing it is to pick the cream throughout the Tanganyika and this is this is natural this is understood yes. but uh, we have said as a government that this is only possible when you have um, a fewer number of schools yes. but as you get more and more schools yes. uh, they tend to be more and more local schools yes. uh, but they can still maintain the standard because they'll still with the expansion of secondary education mm. they'll be choosing again mm. from a much wider Mm. number of candidates than, than, than uh, if you had only a limited number mm. of secondary schools. Well, as do you feel, sir, as a wealthy middle class grows up here in Tanganyika, that they will want to send their children to special private schools, A, for the snob value, and B, perhaps for some special privileges, and to show they are superior to the rest of the people going to your local schools? Well, we aren't uh, different from <laughs> other people in the world, and... Um, there is likely to be that kind of desire, but it's not going to be encouraged by the, by the by present the government. government. <laughs> Fine, thank you, sir. That's, that's lovely. Okay, Alice, I think that was...